have the roll call, please. Council Member Chow? Here. Council Member Fruin? Here. Council Member Moore? Present. Vice Mayor Mohan? Aye. Mayor Way? Here. Okay, so let's go straight to the study session number one. And I believe our city attorney is um, the uh, presenter. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, allow me to share my screen. Um, can every okay everybody can see my screen now great mm -hmm. okay so mayor members of the city council thank you for uh, taking the time to consider this item today we are here to um, to discuss the, the uh, potential to adopt a procedures manual for the city council uh, both Pamela and I identified a need for um, some written policies and procedures to govern uh, uh, council policies, conduct, meetings. Um, this would bring us into alignment with peer jurisdictions in the region, uh, certainly an outlier in uh, the relative uh, dearth of formal written rules we have. For example, we have a, a resolution governing order of business, but um, many of the other things that are covered in this policy have typically been done uh, based on past practice or based on um, a decision by the mayor, uh, sort of on an ad hoc basis. And so uh, every, we feel that everybody would benefit from having clear written rules uh, for our conduct of the council's business, and so we uh, took this the time to develop these policies and bring this to this council. The rules are, are based on the review of uh, rules of uh, other jurisdictions in the region, um, including Saratoga, Mountain View, Campbell, Los Gatos, Berkeley, the City of Richmond, Los Altos, and Palo Alto. Uh, there, there are lots of examples out there, but there's quite a bit of diversity even among that subset of rules to draw from. So it, there, it was a, a, a uh, many options that we could draw from. Um, what's presented is a distillation of those options. There's not necessarily a right answer to a lot of these questions, and so part of our exercise here is to get feedback from council, make sure you're comfortable with the rules we're adopting before we adopt them, and, um, and, but, but hopefully land on a set of rules that we can all um, live with and be governed by. So this is just a, a high-level overview of, 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 of the outline. I'm going to skip over this pretty quickly uh, because I'm going to go into some degree of detail about most of these additional items here. So uh, the, 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 the proposed procedures manual includes uh, rules for selection of the mayor and vice mayor. Uh, the mayor and vice mayor are prohibited from serving consecutive terms. Uh, this is uh, sort of a middle ground between what uh, some jurisdictions do, which is a pure seniority-based rotational system for appointment of the mayor and vice mayor, and um, the current status quo, which, uh, you know, they're, they, it, it's really on an ad hoc basis as to how the vice mayor and mayor are, are selected. The next section of the uh, proposed policy manual governs city commissions and commi committees. Uh, some of this uh, just some of the procedures in the rules simply memorialize practices that are always already in place. Uh, but the rules do, there are, are, are new rules in place that address service on commissions and committees by outgoing council members. Uh, there's also a new rule proposed to prevent undue influence on city commissions. The next section, it covers a variety of administrative matters. Attendance at council me me meetings, council member correspondence, it's the use of basically correspondence on behalf of the city, appointments to regional bodies by the council, responding to public correspondence, ceremonial correspondence, including incorporating by reference a, a newly adopted uh, policy on proclamations and certificates, uh, reimbursement of council member expenses, and council member ethics training. The next section discusses relationships with city staff. 
Uh, much of this is simply incorporates what is already codified in our municipal code in chapter 2.17. Uh, there are some additional requirements that um, they're clarifying the decorum requirements and there is a, a new rule that would clarify council member request for information and that relationship between chapter 2.17 and the Public Records Act. The next section covers agendas and staff reports. There are new procedures that are proposed to formalize the future agenda item and agenda preparation process. Their rules for agenda item descriptions are proposed and there are minor modifications to the former uh, format of staff reports that are proposed. The, the, the meat of the, the proposed manual really is meeting procedures. These, the, they're, the, this is the most extensive part of the proposed manual. Um, the, it, among other things, uh, just to highlight some things, council would adopt a meeting schedule at the beginning of each year. That's actually on, on your agenda this evening, uh, independently of these, these proposed rules. Uh, pr procedures for seating council members are proposed. There are, are modifications to the order of business that are, are, are proposed. Um, there are also the, the, the proposed rules also include changes for the process for public comment on consent items and removing items from the consent calendar. Uh, meeting procedures include rules for public comment and time limit, uh, standards of decorum at council meetings, uh, council would be required to disclose ex parte contacts, um, and, and just to clarify, um, I did get some questions about that. You know, ex, ex parte con uh, council would be required to disclose ex parte contacts in, contacts in advance uh, in, of a hearing on a quasi adjudicative matter. So something like a land use permit or some other entitlement or license um, that council was acting in a quasi judicial capacity. Uh, this is a standard practice in many jurisdictions. Um, so, so if if a council member has a conversation with a party who is interested in a land use matter or an appeal or some other quasi adjudicative procedure, uh, they would be there's there's nothing per se wrong with having that meeting, but they would require be required to report that they met uh, in the interest of transparency. The meeting procedures also uh, are, are also include a uh, procedure for allocating time to council members during deliberations. Uh, there would be limits on the time, uh, time of meetings, including procedures for voting to extend the time of meetings. Uh, the public hearing procedures are, are laid out in some degree of detail, and the, the, the procedures would also uh, adopt uh, a formal recess period each time. Up to this point, again, that's been kind of done on an ad hoc basis as to when council, can, council cancels meetings. I am going to spend a, a little bit of time, if, if council will allow me, to go through some of the suggestions for revisions that we have received from members of the public. Uh, most of these are in the supplemental memo that you, are, that you supplemental staff report that you should have received earlier today. Um, some of them came after came came out after the staff reports released. I did my best to incorporate um, uh, as as many of them as I could um, into this this presentation, so council could discuss them today. Um, so. I'm just going to try to go through these as quickly and thoroughly as possible. Um, so uh, first is, is a suggestion to revise section 1.1 purpose to remove any reference to members of the public. Um, section 2.1 um, uh, could be revised to allow the mayor and vice mayor to continue to serve consecutive terms. Um, and section 2.2.2, um, um, removal of the mayor and the vice mayor um, could be revised to require a warning before uh, removal procedures are instituted. Section four, and then section section four point three, um, it, it would would there's there has been a suggestion to include additional training requirements in the performance expectations for for council members. Section four point four uh, appointment. Uh, there, there, there are th three separate uh, comments that we received, all of which are, would take the, the provision in very different uh, directions. Uh, the first comment you see that strike through red line there 
um, suggests revising it to, to, to make council, former council members not eligible for service on any commission. Um, the second would, would clarify that to, to make sure that, um, which I think is the intent of the current language, to make sure that council members could currently serve, serving on a commission could continue the remainder of their term. And, and the third would simply be to remove this restriction and return to the status quo. And you know, the, I think the intent behind this provision, which was borrowed from a, a nearby jurisdiction, um, is, is you know to allow new people into to, to city government and have new voices heard it, 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 on the commissions. Um, it certainly is not um, targeted at any individual, it, but that but that was that was certainly the intent. Um, um, uh, going on to some additional suggestions, ch changes to section four um, four point six. Um, uh, we, we could be amended to remove the restrictions on council members participating in, in deliberations of city commissions. Um, section 5.7, um, a, a, a council member has suggested revising this um, specifically to address the fact that, that, that some of you will be attending uh, training at the League of Cities Conference in Sacramento and as, as written, the rule arguably um, uh, doesn't um, allow that to qualify. So that there is a suggested revision there. Um, um, we received a, a suggestion from a member of the public to revise section 6.5 on decorum to include a statement uh, that the, the city manager and staff, um, among others, should treat uh, the public with dignity, courtesy, and respect. Um, that seems to be uncontroversial, and um, certainly that would, the omission was not intended to, um, to state otherwise. Um, uh, section 6.5. Six uh, council member access for information. Uh, we received um, uh, comments uh, recommending the deletion of the last sentence addressing council members' use of the Public Records Act requests. Um, so I just want to do want to clarify with respect to this issue. I mean, there there is no uh, legal legal issue with council regulating the conduct of its own members. You know what what staff would do in response to a Public Records Act request that was submitted in response to this rule is a separate question, and it very well might be that, you know, we would respond to that rule, that request to, to, to comply with the Public Records Act request, um, and, and, you know, then it would be up to Council to decide how it wanted to enforce its rules. But, you know, at, there, there's certainly no, uh, no restriction on the ability to con for Council to regulate the conduct of its own members. Um, the intent of this is to, to, to um, align our practices with the intent of, of, of our own municipal code at chapter 2.17, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, and, and that f establishes uh, pretty, um, you know, somewhat flexible, but still cl clear rules on um, council members' rights to access for information. And then, but, you know, balance that, that balances that again against when uh, requests for information should come from the full council consistent with uh, the council manager form of government and other provisions of our code that uh, make it clear that the manager can only take direction from the full council. Um, and, 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 uh, and so that's the intent of this provision. Um, we, 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 as I said, we received, received numerous attempts to delete that. There certainly would be no, uh, n n no legal issue with deleting it. Um, I, there's also, I also, if council is interested, um, there's also, we could also explore softening the language to make it less mandatory and um, allow council members more flexibility and, and also to emphasize um, what I think is a fair point is, is that the need for, for, um, for staff to be responsive to council requests for information in a timely way. So, um, so, so we could certainly uh, explore that if there was an interest from council. Um, uh, we also received a request from a member of the public to, to, to delete from section 7.1 regarding future I agenda items, the ability of a majority of, of members of the city council to, re to remove a future agenda item. Um, we received uh, a request to delete the, rule, the, the regulations for preparation of the agenda. Uh, sim a request to, to delete uh, the, the, the rules for the seating of council members on the dais. Uh, 
uh, request to revise section 8.52, which revolves uh, removing items from consent calendar to, to continue our current practice of allowing members of the public to pull items from the consent calendar. Uh, I would say that um, just briefly with respect to that, um, Cupertino is not unique in that practice, but it, it's, it's certainly in a distinct minority in, 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 in allowing members of the public rather than members of the council to pull item from the consent, to the consent calendar. Um, I, the, we also received a comment su suggesting that we revise section 8.52 to, um, to uh, requ allow council members to remove items from the consent calendar any time before it's heard rather than providing notice before the meeting. Uh, you know, of course, you know, the purpose of the notice is to allow um, staff to be able to prepare it and make sure that the city manager can have uh, appropriate staff to answer um, council questions, but, it, this, but, but again, there would be no legal issue with deleting this. Um, uh, the, the, we also received a, a suggestions to, re, to revise section 8.6 regarding public comment to remove the 10 minute time limit on the total time for public comments by a single member of the public. I think I messed that up. Uh, moving on to uh, section 8.93, council questions and deliberations. Um, uh, the, there's, a, there's, there, 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 there's a suggested revision here that, that um, you can see the text revision on your screen and basically what this revision would do would, would bring the rules for deliberations in line with the rules for council questions. It could simplify uh, sort of the managing the time, managing time um, for the, so it could help the, the simplify that process for the clerk. And it, um, it, I'd say it, it does set clearer expectations than the current version of the rule. Um, we also uh, rece received a request to revise um, section 8.10, which um, governs the, the ending of the time of, of our meetings to allow a, a vote to be extended, the meeting to be extended past 1130 uh, by a simple majority vote of the council, um, as opposed to a, a two thirds vote, which is, you know, you know, unless somebody was absent would require four votes. Um, uh, we, also, we also received a request to clarify section 8.12 12, to, to, to note that a special meeting may be called during recess. Um, that, that, that was always the intent, but I, I think it would make sense for that to be more clear. Uh, moving on, so the, the, those, those were the, the specific revisions to the, the proposed items. Uh, we have received a number of suggestions uh, from, um, to, to include uh, additional information, additional information and rules, and so I'm going to try to go over those briefly. Um, so first, um, council could consider defining a study session and uh, prohibiting council from taking action on a study session item. Um, you know, as um, uh, as I've discussed with some of you, that there is there, there is no prohibition on taking a an action on a study se session item, either in the Brown Act or any other provision in state law or our current rules. Um, uh, I was received, uh, council could consider uh, d adopting a rule to release the agenda earlier um, than it's currently released, so uh, earlier than is required by the Brown Act, to provide more time for council and the public to review that. Um, uh, was, uh, council could consider including language regarding ad hoc subcommittees, um, and, and, and that would basically, you know, Try, try to, to when, when an ad hoc subcommittee is formed, uh, try to estimate staff, staff resources, uh, the membership and purpose of the subcommittee, and, and how the subcommittee is terminated. And there is some um, sample language from um, the city of Palo Alto that's included in your uh, supplemental staff report, uh, and that's true for a number of these items that we're going to go through here. Um, council could consider, including language to emphasize council's policy ma making authority staff's independent independence and the need to present alternatives to council as appropriate again uh, you can refer to the supplemental staff report for uh, sample language um, council could consider including requirements to ensure that staff responses to council questions regarding end end agenda items are shared with other council members and members of the public um, um, 
Council could consider adopting a system of pre-registration for pu the public and virtual speaker cards. Uh, my understanding is this is the, um, the system that Cupertino Un uh, Union School District currently uses. Um, so um, if, if, if Council were to do so direct, staff could, could uh, look into to developing that system. Uh, Council could consider adopting rules for the introduction, introduction of future agenda items through colleagues' memos, which, um, you know, my understanding is essentially a brief memo that could be prepared by um, up to two council members uh, that and could be considered um, during a meeting uh, to, d to help frame the discussion of potential future agenda items. Um, and then uh, finally, Council could consider developing guidelines for uh, writing future agenda item, write, for writing agenda items. Uh, so the recommended action is to provide input regarding these procedures and including all the comments that we received and approve resolution number 23-021. If um, certainly if, if there are, are I, I would expect council to have changes to, to the, 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 the draft manual. That's totally expected. Um, if they are relatively minor changes, I, I think you know we do have some language that's proposed for them. If there are, are, are more significant changes, um, I would recommend against trying to craft language on the dais. Um, and so it really is up to, it, it, it's, it's, it will depend on um, uh, Council's direction as to, as to what, what I think the best course of, con of conduct is as far as, as, as adopting this, that resolution this evening or needing to come back to, uh, to finalize it. So um, with that, I am available for questions and, um, and um, further discussion. Thank you, CD Attorney Jensen. So now we'll open up to um, council questions. Each council has about two minutes to ask council questions. I just have one brief question to ask right now to clarification. Um, Mr. Jensen, the, uh, the suggested revisions are from the public comments, right? Uh, thank you for that clarification. They include both public comments and, and suggestions from uh, council members. Right. But they're not your suggestions. They are the public comments and council suggestions. Yeah, so the, yeah, the, no, that, that's right. The, the, it, it's it, it's not, it's not necessarily n none of them are necessarily the staff recommendation. Um, if you know, if uh, it, I would say, with respect to legal issues, I, I don't think any of them raise legal concerns necessarily. Um, there, there, there. You know, if there is additional discussion required, there. You know, um, we could certainly get into the individual recommendations. Okay, thank you, Attorney Jensen. Now, open up to uh, questions. Um, anybody want to go first? Uh, Council Member Chow. Uh, first, uh, this is a really great summary of all the suggestions, but they are not on the website. So how, where the public can have access to that? So the, so the ones that were received earlier in the day are, are, are included in the, uh, the supplemental staff report that, that um, was posted on the website. Um, the, the, the ones that were received late in the day were included in the presentation at the last minute. Uh, I, can, I can arrange with I the mean clerk. I the presentation so. itself is really good. Is that available somewhere? The, the presentation is, 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 avail is available. It has been updated because I received some comments oh, late in the day. Um, I can arrange with the clerk's office to make sure that the updated version is also available on the city's website. Oh, I just downloaded the presentation. It wasn't updated, so it's the same presentation on the website. Okay, that's fine. So which city has, uh, I understand you consulted many uh, other cities. Which city has the, the, this rule that restrict council members from filing public records act request? So, I, so I'm not aware of any cities that have that rule. Again, that that, that so that's new. Okay, yeah. fine. Um, so, which city has the rule of uh, former council member cannot serve on commission? I believe that was borrowed from the city of Los Altos. City of Los Altos has that. Yeah. But other cities that you have consulted don't have such rule. I, I wouldn't say you have that. I, I, I wouldn't. Like five I, I, I can't. Six I, cities. I, 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 there are other. There's certainly other cities that don't have that rule. I don't know if any of the other cities I consulted don't have that rule. Okay. Um. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um. Through, through the. Thank you, Mary Way. Um. So, just kind of a procedure question. 
um, first because I've got comments on, on, a, on a lot of these items and I see that the public also and other council members also have a lot of comments. I'm wondering how we can go through this um, and, and get our comments collected because I, I think we've perhaps passed what you would consider a tipping point where we could um, pass this resolution tonight because of the number of changes and then I think we would get into uh, language edits for the policy, um, the procedure manual as well and I think that that's going to get pretty complicated and we're going to most likely run out of time. So um, given that, what kind of pr procedure could we do? Like item by item and have our comments, whether, whether or not we have comments on each one and then go um, chronologically through or, or in order through this? So, so I, you know, I'll, I'll defer to council on, on, on sort of the, the best way to structure the deliberations. I'd say at the end of the day, I would, I, I would hope to receive um, a, a motion with, with clear direction to make changes um, so we could bring that back for consideration. Um, so, so, um, so uh, you know, council could consider, um, you know, putting a motion on the table and then deliberating and potentially amending that motion uh, based on the comments of, of council members. But I will, obviously, I will obviously defer to council on how to, to structure their own deliberations. Okay, so thank you. So m many, if not all, of the suggested revisions I agree with. Um, there was one I was concerned about with, with regards to council deliberations having a time limit, and I was wondering if you could explain that a little further. Is that you get five minutes to speak, and then another turn? Um, it certainly can't be five minutes total. So it's 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 fi it, it's at least five minutes initially, and then the the, the, the mayor can allow additional time, um, which would be a, a, certainly be appropriate for for uh, complex agenda items. Okay, but. W Unless you have four people out of the five agreeing to call the question, um, it could we could continue to uh, deliberate on an item. Uh, so you would you would you would you would need a, 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 a motion a successful motion to call the question to take an item off of the table. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Mohan. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Ray. Uh, just for my own clarification uh, and understanding, uh, um, Mr. City Attorney, uh, what are the timelines? Uh, so, um, as Council Member um, Moore mentioned, there are comments that have not been included in your uh, list. I'm assuming there are more that sort of came in after you uh, prepared this list which will somehow get included in the list? So, so uh, I, the, the, the list that we walked through in the presentation is, is, is relatively comprehensive. I, 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 there's po there is a possibility that I, I missed something or I, I misspoke and I wouldn't necessarily want to speak for members of the public uh, who, um, who had their own uh, views on what should be in the, the manual. So that's it's really for council's convenience. I think as far as the timeline goes, you know, what would be most helpful is to get clear direction from council one way or another as to what changes they would like made to this draft. Um, and, and, and then we should be able to bring that back fairly quickly, I would think, at the, the next, our first meeting in February. And is, would that be the uh, opportunity to finalize the report or to uh, approve? Or Count, is, is there something else happening after that? No, I, 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 I think the, I, the goal, I think, would be to try to get through as much as possible and, and, mm -hmm. and, and get all of the changes, direction on all the changes uh, this evening and then uh, ad adopt a final set of final, final procedures manual at the next time this comes to you. Okay. Thank you very much. And Council Member Fuel. Thank you, Mayor Wei. Um, so to pick up on a, a note from Council Member Moore with respect to Section 8.9.3, the five minute cap on Council deliberations, um, the Rosenberg's rule of order respecting the question, calling the question 
if the language were changed here from the current draft language to the language that is suggested as an alteration in your revision, your presentation, would that change your analysis? So I, 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 I think Rosenberg's rules would still control to end debate. Um, council could, Rosenberg's rules are adopted by council and council could, could modify them if it so chose. Very good. And then my second question with regard to the use of the PRA, have we had an unusually large number of PRA requests that have emanated from council members? Um, I, I, I don't know if it's an unusually large number, but the, but the, but the, the, the number has, up, there's been an uptick that I have observed in, uh, the, over the last year plus that I've been here. And has it consumed a, a particular amount of staff time? Uh, it consumes staff time like any other Public Records Act request does. Do you have an estimate for how much staff time it has consumed? I, I don't. I, I, um, I, I, the, the, the clerk may have an estimate or, or we may have to get back to you on that. I, I don't have a distinction amongst um, the council versus the member of, members of the public, but overall record, Public Records Act requests are taking up about 30% of our time. Thank you. That's all for now. Um, so can I have one last procedure question is, um, I'm a little confused on, do we always have to need to call the question in order to make a motion and uh, to vote? Or there is a rule, Rosenberg's rules, that if we each have five minutes and we have a motion and a second on the table, we can move to vote. What is the procedural, um, legal procedure? Well, so, you don't you you do, you don't need to call the question to vote, and routinely we don't. But if somebody wishes to be recognized uh, in order to move on to a vote, there does need to be a motion to call the question, uh, and that that requires four votes under Rosenberg's rules of procedure. Okay. So, one more. Um, <clears throat> um, yes. So, with with regards to um, the the calling of the question uh, issue. Uh, from my standpoint, it's to make sure that if there are, there's still information that we uh, need to discuss about an item, that we are given that time. So my concern was f five minutes seems awfully short. Are we, you know, what what do we have to to ensure that we are able to have a, an item uh, fully deliberated on before we vote? Um, that's where where that comes from. Um, as to there was um, the the removing of the mayor and the vice mayor, um, and it says with cause, um, but I don't understand what that cause actually is. I understand that there is a warning suggestion as an alternative. But what's the cause? So you know, so so it just there would it means that there ha would have to be some reason stated, and that there would have to be evidence to support that reason. Um, and it's 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 a it is within um, the you know th there would be within the discretion of the the council to identify reasons that rise to the level of for cause. I would I would expect it would be some kind of serious misconduct that would require removal. Um, I'll also, I mean, I'll just use this, this opportunity to clarify that it is, it is removal from, uh, from the, the, the office of mayor or vice mayor and not removal from the council. That there, I think there might have been some confusion among the public. Um, through, through the mayor, so uh, other cities do have a more structured procedure for, for violations, and um, I think that I would be nervous uh, looking at something s saying just cause, what w and not have that actually explicitly spelled out. Um, so I'm I'm concerned about that because it's it's vague. And then later on, when you mention, um, I, it might be in either nine or ten, you mention violations again, and and it's still not really clear what happens there, what the policy is. Uh, so I I, I I I can try to respond to the question regarding violations. Um, there there is there is not a detailed violations policy in the proposed r proposed rules. There are other jurisdictions that have that, and and we could we could consider that could be direction from council to consider adding that kind of detailed policy. Um, the the policy merely uh, references the censure process, which is something that. Um, 
really council has the inherent authority to censure its own members and that you know that as that would be um, you know imposition of discipline on a council member by council by vote at a public meeting for whatever the um, the, the um, alleged violation was um, you know that said uh, I think the intent of these rules is to be self enforcing uh, you know and, and that and that, that um, you know hopefully we, you know everybody would make a good faith, faith effort to follow whatever rules were adopted um, any violations could be addressed informally um, you know by by uh, the city manager or the mayor, and um, a a and that censure process would be rarely used, um, and that that's part of the reasoning behind not having a sort of, you know a detailed um, uh, a detailed uh, disciplinary policy in, in in the rules. But again, if if that's something council wishes to adopt, um, you could give direction to the city manager and the city attorney to to prepare that. Okay, thank you. I think do you have one more question, Councilmember Fong? Go ahead. Yeah, so under our current rules, we don't have any set procedure for removing the mayor or vice mayor. Is that correct? That's my understanding, yes. Yeah. So at present, if somebody wanted to, we could agendize it and three people could remove the mayor without any cause whatsoever. Yeah, because the mayor, the, the mayor and vice mayor are appointed by council and, and, and can be removed by council. Very good, thank you. Right, at this moment, I think I'd like to open up for public comment. Uh, so, um, do we have any cars and uh, people on the uh, Zoom? Yes, See. Mayor, we actually have six blue speaker cards from uh, residents that are in Community Hall, and we have three hands raised, uh, now six hands raised on Zoom. Would you like to take Zoom first? Yes, let's take Zoom first, and just a reminder that if you would like to speak, please do it within five minutes and either turn in a blue card or raise your hand on Zoom. Thank you. So our first three speakers will be Jean Bedord, Carol Gorska, and caller 5790. Jean, I will allow you to speak. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Wei, Vice Mayor Mohan, and council members. Welcome to the new year. My name is Jean Bedord and I am a longtime Cupertino resident. I spoke before council at your last meeting urging council to remedy the city council dysfunction identified in the grand jury report released on December 19th, 2022, and to do this as quickly as possible. I'm here tonight to commend the city for moving forward with this city council procedures manual to address many of the issues identified in that report. The Moss Adams report to the council was submitted in December, 2020, two years ago. While these auditors have been engaged in developing policies and procedures for the finance department, the council failed to address the significant governance risk identified by the internal auditor. As a resident, I'm tired of meetings which go until midnight and fail to act on published agenda items because the council has spent two hours on the consent calendar. I'm tired of too many special meetings due to lack of time management by council members. I'm tired of the negative press about the behavior of Cupertino City Council members who don't seem to understand city governance. These written procedures are a big step forward in setting expectations for conduct of council business, both for council members and the public. I urge you to move ahead with this procedures manual without trying to carve out exceptions to justify bad behavior. Yes, it may need to be tweaked in the future, so council should move ahead and get streamlining immediately instead of delaying any action. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Next we have Carol Gorska, followed by caller 5790, followed by Peggy Griffin. Welcome, Carol. Uh, hello, Mayor Wei, Vice Mayor, uh, uh, Vice Mayor and Council members. 
Um, I just have a comment on this first item about the procedures manual. I ask you please not to vote on adopting the, the procedures manual during this session. Something this important should be discussed at, at, in at least one general session before taking a vote. Neither council nor the public has had the chance to read the entire document with any sort of comprehension. Voting on an action in a study session is, okay, not unprecedented and not illegal, but it should be because it breaks our democratic procedural norms. Study sessions as are, as it says, right in the name for study, not action. And being unprecedented or nearly so, your constituents will not be expecting a vote. Please don't ram this through in the session just because you can and just because you don't want to hear dissent. And I have a question, which is what makes it a study session different from a general session if you can vote on things? Thank you very much. Thank you, Carol. Next, we have caller 5790 followed by Peggy Griffin, followed by Lisa Warren. Welcome, caller 5790. One moment. Uh, okay, I keep losing you. There you go. Um, this is Peggy Griffin. Hi. Yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Go this, ahead. Caller five seven nine zero. Carol. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. This is Carol Stanek. I'm a Cupertino Parks and Rec commissioner, and I'm speaking for myself tonight. I'm happy to see the new council quickly putting in place procedures, which will hopefully return our city governance to a more transparent, fair, and well-functioning government body. I fully support Section 5.7 regarding council training on ethics and anti-harassment. I have recently completed the online ethics course provided by the city to commissioners. I think the course provides good guidance for commissioners and council members alike. Two concepts stood out from the training that I would like to highlight. The first is that the end does not justify the means. There are many ways that council can come accomplish its goal. If a council member requires information from staff, council members should follow protocol. They should not have to resort to a public records act request, which would be viewed as a hostile action. Therefore, I support section 6.6, .6, which explicitly states that no council member shall circumvent the city manager's direction by seeking information through a public records act. The second concept that stood out for me from the training that I hope council takes to heart is that perception matters. This can be applied in many situations, especially when interacting with staff. In public meetings, we can directly observe whether council members are treating staff with respect. But even in private conversations, if staff does not, re does not feel respected, even if a council member is or not aware or says they don't intend to be disrespectful, staff's perception of an act of disrespect or harassment is real. I expect that council members, commissioners, staff, and the public will treat each other with dignity, courtesy, and respect. With respect to our commissions, I welcome section 4.3 regarding commission performance expectations. I further implore the council to appoint commissioners based on applicant qualifications and demonstrated engagement. Training in ethics and meeting protocol needs to be expanded. Commissioners need to embrace their roles to listen to our residents. Commissioners also need to understand the approved scope of their work and not stray from that scope to increase staff workload. Scope of commissions should be included in training. In section 4.6, the last council, the last sentence says council members and commissioners shall refrain from speaking. We should not, uh, it should be clarified that commissioners must still be allowed to exercise their right to speak as an individual on any matter before city government. Thank you for taking these issues seriously. Thank you, Carol. Next, we have Peggy Griffin, followed by Lisa Warren, followed by San R, followed by our final speaker, Tessa Parrish. Welcome, Peggy. Good evening, council members and staff. Um, I've sent many comments, and tonight I'm just going to pull out the key ones that are I consider critical. Um, do not vote on this tonight. Finalize it first and provide it during a regular meeting, not a study session. Remove the max total time limit of 10 minutes for an individual to speak at a city meeting. 
remove the restriction that a council member can't submit a public records request. Ideally, um, the information can come in through the normal channels, but they should not be restricted to not be able to do that. Um, allow the public to pull consent items. Tonight's agenda is an example, 20 of 28 items under consent. We would not be allowed to do anything to hear them unless some council member decided they wanted to hear it. And we wouldn't, we'd be limited to what we could say on that agenda item. Um, allow a council member to pull a consent item during the meeting. People can give their uh, list of pulled items in advance if they know, sometimes you don't know. Um, don't allow the city manager or the majority council to remove future agenda items put on by two council members. That, that ability is to allow a minority to put an item on the agenda, but this is a workaround to remove it again. So, so remove that restriction. Staff reports, do not remove the background and discussion sections. That helps the council members and the public to come up to speed if they're not familiar with the topic and refreshes their menu if it had come back two years ago. Define what goes under consent and other sections of the agenda. New mayors may not know. Define what it is to, to be a study meeting and state that voting is not done. I think I saw this in Palo Alto when I was looking at different uh, procedures, but I don't take me up on it. Anyway, thank you for your work and please consider these critical items. Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. And our final three speakers on Zoom, we will get to the remaining speakers that are in house after the Zoom callers uh, Lisa Warren, San R, and Tessa Parrish. And anyone after Tessa, I'm sorry you do not have your hand raised within the five minute um, time window. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. So this is an interesting topic. Surely it's not, no one's going to suffer from having the discussion and we could all benefit if it's done correctly. Correctly, I believe, includes making no permanent decision tonight for various reasons. Forever and ever, study sessions were not a place where votes were taken to make something new happen with no further discussion. It's a chance to study more, study something with more casual discussion to get to the point where it can be formed into something that's really worth voting on. So that's one thing. Um, the ex parte um, admission, we will call it, or, or anyway, that was spoken of early in Mr. Jensen's um, presentation. I would like to know if there's any recourse for a council member that does not divulge an ex parte communication over land use and whatever else is covered under that section. Because just hoping that someone will tell you does not mean that they will, and if there's factual evidence that they have and someone can point that out, I think it needs to be addressed properly. Cause, I too, like Council Member Moore, am concerned about the cause not being defined. If a cause isn't definable, then is that really something you want in there? but I'm hearing people want it in there and I don't know how I feel about it because I don't think it's well enough explained for removing mayor or vice mayor. I am very glad that it's been communicated and clarified that removing them at those positions does not remove them from council because that would be ridiculously wrong when it's the residents who elect them. Uh, public should definitely be able to pull consent items for reasons that Peggy mentioned and just because it, it we're moving away I believe I heard Carol Stanick say that she thought this was a, a move in a more transparent way and I, I 
feel differently in many cases with this. It's um, maybe it'll end up that way, but it, it just feels like we're going backward in transparency. And I feel as though some of these rules in place to protect staff, and that's a weird phrase to say, and maybe it's not the right way to say it, is contradictory to how people treat people in council. So I just feel like there needs to be a little more even scale there and some understanding on emotions and passions and just human nature. And I really wish we would all get beyond, get into the John Willie way, as our mayor said, she, that was the way to go. I'm feeling this is not entirely. Thank you, Lisa, that is your time. Next, we have San R followed by Tessa Parrish. Welcome, San. Yes, good evening, Mayor and City Council. I would like to request a key missing data point to be included in the materials. And that is for each of these changes that are proposed to include what cities include that clause in their, uh, in their guidance on uh, council behavior, as well as to list out which cities do not, so that it is clear to the public which of these clauses are adopted by which cities and what cities, in terms of counts, adopt some of these policies versus do not. So for example, if there were a clause like the use of PRA was only used by one city council versus not uh, seen in other cities, it would be useful information for the public to be aware of. So I request the city attorney and staff to include for each of these clauses, which cities uh, are adopting or not adopting these clauses. Uh, additional commentary is appreciated for the public as well, such as when this was introduced and why, if it was only a single city. Uh, in order to provide meaningful input on this, I encourage the city to use public outreach to share that this change is coming and to use all means possible to get public input. We use public input for a variety of different city actions, such as the Blackberry Farm, the Memorial Park, the Lawrence Mitty Park, and so on. Why is it that this change is going through with no community outreach? I would like to see public engagement, awareness, and input. Not everybody may be able to come in and speak at the city council meeting, but that is not a reason to not take public input on a matter of this type. It builds public awareness of the changes. It raises questions around why these changes are needed. And it allows us to provide more clear guidance from a broader community that really should be better engaged. I also would like to request a few key items to be considered in the changes that you're looking at. The first is that former council members not serve on the commissions. I do not see what the reason should be for such a change. We are grateful for the service of all council members and their experience is invaluable. And having them serve on commissions only makes us a better city. While it is always welcome to have new members on commissions, anyone that is willing to serve after city council term should be allowed to do so. Likewise, I'd like to bring up the topic of the time limit on public comment. 30 minute public comment is too limited in time. And I encourage you to make sure that you do not cut back on public comment time. And similarly, on the use of PRA, I see no reason why the PRA should not be used. There can be guidelines to encourage the use of cordial staff and council interaction, but not pulling out clauses such as the ability to use PRA. So there's a number of other areas I'd like to give feedback, but I'd like to start with community outreach to get input. Thank you. Thank you, San. And our final speaker on Zoom is Tessa Parrish. Welcome, Tessa. Hi there. <clears throat> Good evening, uh, Council, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and um, staff. Um, my name is Tessa Parrish, and I am, well, first of all, I regarding the passing, I at first I didn't think it was going to be propose that um, the resolution be passed tonight because it was a study session. But then I read that the recommendation is to pass it. 
And the actual resolution being proposed says, um, whereas January 17th, the City Council considered propo uh, proposed policies and procedures at a duly noticed regular meeting of the City Council. This is not a regular meeting. And duly noticed, um, it is a holiday weekend. I actually didn't have time uh, until today, to actually last night to read it. But also there was changes um, that the city attorney or that were posted after the initial. So I just don't feel that the public has been properly, uh, it hasn't been duly noticed in my opinion, and it's not a regular meeting. So for this resolution, I don't think it can be passed. And if there's any changes, I think they have to, the public have to be notified my two cents on that matter. Um, second, uh, let's see, the elected, uh, so the mayor, I, I'm glad there was clarification on, on the not removal of office. Um, the manual does not specify reasons for removal or proper nor proper procedure uh, or an attempt to correct the wrong. Um, it seems that it's without cause, like it could be, cause could be almost anything very arbitrary when it's not specified so in any work um, place any any you you have rules policies or violations a list of violations that would cause that so i'd like to see a list of violations that would warrant removal and a list of actions to try to address them before the 72-hour removal any justice action as this seems to be should have a proper notice otherwise it violates the rights of the person to be given proper notice and it breaks the public confidence in the rule of law and rule of law is a principle of course under which all persons institutions and, and entities are accountable to laws that are publicly um uh, propagated sorry about that equally enforced independently adjudicated i believe there must be a clear list of violations otherwise again not just this council, next councils, and future councils, it can be very arbitrary. Um, so I beg you not to vote on this until it's duly uh, noted and it's uh, the public has had a time to read it and really uh, give input on this. The restriction on comments is also contrary to the, you know, the transparency promises that were made. Uh, it really seems to be limiting and not understanding why. There's only a few meetings ever, like throughout the year, that go beyond the 30 minutes. Why restrict it? In the past, they've gone into other meetings. Thank you, Tessa. That was your time. And now we will move to those members that are in community hall that would like to address council. I have six speaker cards, starting with Kathy Helgerson, Connie Cunningham, followed by Jennifer Griffin. Kathy, please approach the podium. Okay, I have been before the council in 41 years. That's how long I've been in Cupertino, okay? This is a new council. We have a nice lawyer here, but he's not making it because he doesn't know what to do. He's frustrated, you're frustrated, the staff is frustrated, I'm frustrated, the public is totally frustrated. So why don't we do this? Let's get a mediator in here. Let that person come in here and hash it out with all of you. Do some procedures that really will work, because this isn't going to work. I've got news for you. It's like the government. That's not working either. So be smart. You know, all of you are responsible now for our well-being. If something happens to us, it's going to be on your shoulders. $800,000 somebody embezzled over 17 years. How the hell could that happen without the city council, city manager, all the staff? Everybody knew. How did this woman get away with it? And where'd the money go? More people are responsible, and I'm going to the grand jury about this. I want you all to know, because I'm gonna find out who did it, okay? Do not vote on this tonight, because he wrote most of it. You need to listen to the public. All of you need to listen to the public, okay? I don't wanna sit up there, I never wanted to, because you're gonna tie my hands, just like this. You're all tied. You can't move. Leanne, you're worse off than all of them. Because you know better. You know what's going on. How do you sleep at night? 
All right, the homelessness, okay? The undocumented. I took in a homeless person. He's been with me for three years and I can't get him a green card. What are you gonna do about that? There's a woman next to Target store living in a tent. I've complained twice to the police. You know, I've called the city. Nobody will help this woman. What are you gonna do about that? This is our city. I want progress. I want Cupertino, okay, to be great. Not great again, to be great now, not great again, okay? I want you to follow examples of people that have a conscience, morals. You're talking about ethics? You went to the grand jury? What happened to the money that $800,000? is a lot of money. You know, a lot of money you could have helped the homeless, you could have built homeless shelters. There's buildings here that could be, the homeless could be in these buildings that, you know, that nobody's occupying right now. You're not doing anything about these buildings that are here, okay? Please understand, I've been around the block. I've been a buyer in electronics for years. Nobody could have gotten away with that person did. I'm not gonna mention her name. Nobody could have gotten away with what she did without other people knowing about it. I worked for Stanford for three and a half years in the finance department. I worked as a buyer in electronics. I, I, I overseed 400 contracts. I know how it works. Find out who did it and make sure that they are brought before the grand jury or somebody because that's where I'm going. Okay? Thank you, Kathy. Next we have Connie Cunningham followed by Jennifer Griffin followed by Jennifer Sharon. Welcome, Connie. Thank you. Um, first, uh, uh, starting over, if I might. Okay. I hadn't really started. hadn't really started yet. <laughs> okay. Dear Mayor Way, Vice Mayor Moen, Council Members, City Manager, and City Attorney. First, I wanted to congratulate May Morley. Matt Morley, as the new assistant city manager, I think he will be excellent in that role. Um, and secondly, I enthusiastically support the reform package of changes to the city council procedures. <clears throat> I support approval of the resolution this evening. I've attended many council meetings over the years. As I read the reforms, I could actually feel how these changes would improve the process. Reducing staff workload that will allow more work to move forward on resident services. It to increase the amount of time accessible to residents to speak to council. To reduce the length of meetings. 2 a.m. is simply not a time when residents can attend, nor is it good time for decisions made by exhausted council members. Clear rules make life easier for everyone, especially residents, since they less frequently interact with council. I like that it clarifies decorum so that all parties listen to all opinions respectfully, including public towards staff, electeds, and appointeds. I think that this will take more of the politics out of the day-to-day -day governance of the city. It's good for residents who want council to get things done. I do not find the request for changes that I've heard here this evening to be compelling, or the ones that were presented that um, the attorney received after this was published. I think it should move forward and work with it. If changes are necessary, they can be addressed at a later time. I urge you to approve resolution, resolution number 23-021, adopting the Cupertino City Council Procedures Manual, presented by Christopher Jensen, City Attorney. Thank you so much for this time to comment, and good evening. Thank you, Connie. Next we have Jennifer Griffin, followed by Jennifer Sheeran, followed by Richard Lowenthal. Welcome, Jennifer. Um, good evening, City Council. Oh, I think I broke this thing. Uh, <laughs> hi. Um, okay, Happy New Year and Happy New Year again. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Johnson, for a very good presentation of the manual. Um, our staff is oftentimes told to do things. We don't know why they're told to do things, but they have. it's a job. They have to do it. Um, therefore, I think the staff has done a good a job as they could. 
in being requested to prepare this document. Under no circumstances should this be voted on tonight. I never saw that anywhere in this. And I've been coming here for 22 years and five years in the uh, Board of Supervisors before that. You do not vote on things in study sessions. You never, no one has ever done that. So if you guys are expecting to do that tonight, you're breaking your own protocol. Um, so I'm assuming we won't do that because you did not adequately advertise this. So that's no, no, number one. I'm gonna say right now, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Cupertino has done one heck of a job in the last 22 years that I've been here. And believe me, I have seen a lot of stuff in here. We went through the entire Apple spaceship meetings. And yes, the latest I've ever been here is 4.30 a.m. But I was glad to do it. This is my city. I chose to live here. I moved here with my first job at Tandem. And I chose to stay here. Um, you know, things may be messy and different in Cupertino, but that's the way we do it. Um, I really don't think that it's appropriate to limit the public's input. I'm sorry, I told you, I had ancestors that died before the American Revolution in conflict with the English. We lost five family members five years before the Revolution. Okay, yeah, that may sound stupid, but with all the things that are going on in this state, I am looking back at what my ancestors went through to start the revolution. And I see a lot of similarities right now. So yes, don't limit our public input. I had no idea that, you, that somebody was trying to limit the number of times that somebody could come up and talk about items on the agenda. Whoa, I have never seen that done before. Are we going into Putin land with this? Um, and you know, yeah, I'm pulling lots of stuff off the consent calendar tonight. Have been doing it for 22 years. I have been to city council meetings in Capitola, Santa Cruz, San Jose, Sunnyvale. Um, they actually say a prayer before the Santa Clara um, city council meeting because that city is almost 200 years old. So yeah, we all do it different, but I don't like a lot of things that are in this, um, and, and definitely, if you vote on this tonight, I'm calling Cortese, Evan Lowe, and the governor. Um, I'm out of time, so thank you. Yes, and my mother's got thank cousins you, Jennifer. that were Next in the we have Jennifer Sharon. parliament. Thank you. Good evening, council members and Mayor Way. Um, as yesterday was the celebration of Martin Luther King Jr. Day, um, I saw some parallels to what the council is trying to do tonight, so bear with me here. Um, these are some words he said back in 1965. We must come to see that the end we seek is a society at peace with itself. And I do emphasize peace. Uh, these changes that are proposed by the city staff to amend our, our Cupertino City Council and Commission procedures are a step towards this piece, but of course on a much smaller scale. I wholeheartedly support these changes with a few concerns, but I sent you an email so you guys have seen those. I've heard some speakers tonight try to change nothing about what we've done, and I think we've all seen the news. Um, we've seen what's happened with the grand jury and, and what their findings were. We can't keep going the way we've been going. Um, we need to do something different. These new council and commission procedures will ensure that meetings are run in efficient and responsible manner, respecting the time, opinions, and work of everyone, including staff, council members, residents like myself, and you know, commissioners even that come. Spending hours and hours on this, talking about it more and more um, in a future session, somewhere else, et cetera, is, it's not efficient or respectful. I think, I think we know that. I encourage the council tonight to approve these changes and to move us forward in the new year. 
thank you for your work on behalf of all of us and um, everyone who is potentially going to be a resident one day. Thanks. Thank you, Jennifer. Our next speaker is Richard Lowenthal, followed by our final speaker, Rhoda Fry. Welcome, Richard. Thank you very much. Uh, Happy New Year in two ways to our uh, new mayor, council members, and staff. Uh, I appreciate the, the alacrity you've used to address the issues that have been facing our city, and uh, I think the city, city attorney did a great job of creating uh, a document to get us going on this. Uh, we need to do it quickly, if not tonight. I think you should set a deadline um, because we, we need these changes to happen and we could talk about them endlessly. So, uh, so I'm hoping uh, you have a, a process that gets us to closure, if not tonight, then soon. I did have uh, a couple of questions uh, that, I'll, that I'll leave you with. Um, I, I wondered if, if the prohibition on council members managing staff members applies also to our contractors. Because I know we had an incident last year where a council member directed a sheriff's deputy to do something at an event. Uh, and it seems to me that, that the prohibition about managing our individual staff members without using the, the city manager should also apply to our contractors. That would be librarians, deputies, firefighters, uh, anybody else who also comes under the management of the city manager. So, so um, I think that should be done. It's up to you. Um, an issue that I, that I was wondering about, I noticed there was a detailed uh, ordered agenda as part of this document, but there's also the statement in here that the, city, that the mayor sets the order of the agenda. So I think it needs clarification which one you mean either that we use the one that you you spelled out in here or that the mayor has discretion or the mayor has discretion to change the one that you spelled out in here but right now it's ambiguous so i think that should be clarified um and that's all i had to say i'm, I'm really happy that you, that you're you're wrestling with these tough issues our city has a bad reputation for uh, uh the council staff interaction and i think you're on the road to fix it thank you very much Thank you, Richard. Our final speaker is Rhoda Fry. Welcome, Rhoda. Hi, good evening, council members. Last but not least, I'm Rhoda Fry. I am a 40-year resident of Cupertino, and I have to say it is delightful to be here at a hybrid meeting. Um, County of Santa Clara has actually just recently gone to hybrid after having been all by uh, teleconference for quite some time. Um, but I'll get on with my comments. Um, the public must be guaranteed the opportunity to speak during public comment um, without prejudice. Um, and I guess I mean by that is the non-agenda and also agenda items. Um, so I'd like to see the proposal to be tightened up regarding oral communications. I also did send you an email. Um, and also the prohibition to essentially be able to speak no more than three items and I was just taken aback that that was even considered. Um, it appears that it's been taken back, but how could anybody even think about not having the public comment? That's, and it's, it's, that's what we do. Um, Jennifer Griffin said it much better than I could, could have. Um, and we should be allowed to speak on an unlimited number of items. Um, so city council members should also be allowed to have the same rights and privileges as the general public. So that would be um, public records and also as uh, former Mayor Lowenthal mentioned, um, it seems to me that if a council member sees something going wrong that they should be able to um, engage the services of the Sheriff's Department um, as any member of the public would. Uh, it should be up to the city council who is vice mayor, mayor, and who serves on a commission. If our city council sees it fit to repeat a mayor, vice mayor, or to have a former council member on a committee, so be it. It would be restrictive of the available pool of qualified individuals to not permit a former council member to serve on a commission or committee within four years of the, having served uh, our city. This is just plain wrong. Our city council should be empowered to make that decision. 
Uh, with respect to minutes from committees and subcommittees, there should always be minutes. This is for the administration, for the administrative record. They must be made available regardless of whether um, a recommendation to city council is made. So it, it seems that it reads it only if a recommendation is made, but it should be regardless, we should have these minutes. Um, with respect to consent items, I'm really surprised about the number of items that are on the consent calendar. You know, I kind of get it. You don't want to have to be a staff member and say, oh no, I'm going to have to speak to this item because it's been pulled. And, and I get that. It's not fair. It's really not fair to, to staff. So, but we should be allowed to defer an item on consent calendar to a future uh, to a future meeting. It shouldn't be just, you know, um, by default accepted. Finally, I'm not sure um, whether this belongs in item number two. Parks and Rec uh, should be able to decide which fees are waived, and that's consistent with the communi community grant process that we have thank today. You, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I'd like to thank all the public who made comments for your time and passion and your communication. Thank you very much. Now I'm going back to the council for questions. Uh, we need to finish this by 6.45 to start a regular meeting, maybe 6.40, so that five minutes for uh, from each council, please. And do I have uh, first, who would like to speak first? Okay. So, um, uh, Ra raise your hand. Oh, okay, council member Chow. Oh, sorry. I need to log in to virtual meeting first. Um, no, you speak here. Sorry, I, I, I have slides to share, so I'll speak later. I need to log into the virtual meeting first. I'm not logged in right now. Oh, so. oh. Okay, we have another council member speak first then. So when council member Chow gets ready. Who would like to, um, council member Moore? Okay, um, thank you. So, so um, I'm kind of wondering how we're going to go through these these items. Um, if you if you want, I can just start at one and go through and, and, and give you my comments on them. Um, and uh, not hearing anything, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, so I agree with 1.1 purpose, um, uh, striking the line and men members of the public. Um, moving on to 2.1, uh, that I disagree with the, the line, the mayor and vice mayor shall not serve consecutive terms and agree with having that struck. Uh, I don't think we should be passing 2.2 until we have uh, determined what the, uh, cause actually is and what that um, process is. So I would uh, remove it until uh, we, we have uh, decided about that. Um, so under 3.1, uh, I don't think the mayor should have the authority to appoint council members to all of the committees and the subcommittees, um, and that the council should be able to nominate people for uh, the, the subcommittees. Um, currently, the, the mayor has the historic authority with no policy to drop a list of appointments to council and regional committees, which does not have a transparent process. Um, there is no description of how the decisions are made, um, and there is there can be a uh, non-uniform distribution of the committee assignments, uh, a lack of concern for council member preferences or, or experience. And I, I did have some concern that some of the appointments were just left off um, in December. And uh, I w am wondering how many meetings can a council member miss before their alternate is responsible for that assignment? Let's see, so I've got three minutes. Um, for under instructions and expectations, I did a little bit unrelated, but do we have records of the C to C meetings and the school board group meetings? These are continuing meetings uh, which are not noticed on our website. And as far as I know, that we we don't have uh, meeting minutes being provided. Uh, item 3.3, uh, I would remove the caveat whenever a recommendation um, is made to the council so that the reports are always provided. And I, I really like this report um, suggestion. I think this is great. Um, but this would mean that all of the reports for every committee and subcommittee are available in writing to the public and shall be submitted to the city clerk as written communications, this is my suggestion, um, prior to the regular council meeting where the reports are made. The reports are provided up to the previous regular council meeting to stay current with reporting. And then that way, all the council members have a, a better idea of what's going on with these um, subcommittees. Um, 
item 4.2, um, I add a preference, preferably the chair or the vice chair. Um, at least where it says at least one commission member must attend city council meetings, my preference is that the chair or the vice chair would be uh, the individuals. Um, I really like the training that you're suggesting in item 4.3. For item 4.4, um, I, I, I agree with the, the, rec the change suggestion that former council members would be eligible um, for appointment um, to any commission or committee within four years of having served on the city council. And the reason why is that a former council member would have a good deal of institutional knowledge, which would be becoming obsolete within four years. So I'm not sure that that's wise. Um, Let's see, uh, item 4.6, uh, I agree with uh, removing the line, individual council members and commissioners shall the right to attend meetings of commissions and other Cupertino governmental, governmental bodies, but shall refrain from speaking or becoming involved in deliberations. Um, I felt this was too restrictive. Um, I'm wondering under item 5.1, attendance, if we could add something like um, council attendance will be noted in the agenda of the next regular meeting and thereafter for that calendar year. If three or more meetings are missed, I've been told of a council member who's missed um, 13 uh, in the county um, and without having any policy. Uh, official correspondence under 5.2 correspondence, official correspondence this is a suggestion um, from any member of the council shall be provided to all members of the council because they're writing on behalf of the entire council. I thought we should know what's being um, uh, sent out. Uh, and 5.3 under regional bodies, um, I would prefer that there would not be the brief oral report solely, but that there would be a written report required and that council would provide that written report to council consistent with section 3.3, because I really like the reporting ideas. Um, so I, I think I'll stop now, and then as we circle back, I'll move on from 5.5 .5 to the end. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Council Member Moore. And um, are you ready, Council Member Chow? Yeah. Hi, thank you. Thank you, City Attorney, for um, preparing this report. Um, it's good that we are starting the first step to establish some procedures. But as far as I know, the council did not request this, and the council members were not interviewed before the draft was presented, and the commissions were not consulted. Staff report did not include reference materials used to draft the handbook, so we can understand what other cities do, do for each of these items. The revised presentation by the city attorney with some excellent revision suggested. I have not been able to find that from the city website or in my email. So there is a lack of information for us to take action. I agree with a lot of the revision proposed and the Quad Council Member Moore suggested, but I would not have time to go through them, so I'm just going through some highlights. First, we need to define study session. Um, I included quotes from Berkeley and Palo Alto. Both of them specify there should be no action taken during study session. And that has been a Cupertino protocol. And also, the, the quoted here is from the Berkeley Agenda Deve Development Guidelines. When we have agenda like today in the staff report, it should reference who were the sources that the staff have consulted and what source documents were used to, to, per, to derive this draft. Those were not provided today, and I think we should establish that protocol. And uh, what's quoted here is from our own municipal code. It specified that the city staff should make every effort to respond in a timely and professional manner to all requests. Such language should be included in the council procedure. And uh, it's understand that sometimes the workload might be too significant. Then it's appropriate to assign to to staff through the collective direction of the council. According to the municipal code, I'm suggesting that city manager put the request which would require significant workload to council agenda so the entire council can decide with public input. 
because I would not know Council Member Mohan suggest maybe requested some information. I might have wanted to know, but I would not able to be able to and should be rejected because it requires staff time. But maybe the public also would like to know. So I think that should be put on the agenda for the entire council to weigh in and decide. That's according to our municipal code. And the municipal code then stated that the intention of this section on information request, this language should um, be also included in the handbook so it's clear. No one is trying to circumvent the city manager, but we need the information to, to do our job, to make decisions. And California Public Records Act specifically specify elected officials should be permitted to get public records to do our duty for the public's work. And uh, as city attorney clarified, no other city has ever had any restriction on public records requests. These are the list of cities city attorney has consulted and uh, Cupertino will be the first one. And the Palo Alto Council procedures has this very clear uh, guideline that I think we should include. Respect the role of council members as policy makers so that when the staff propose something, there should be options proposed, not just one staff recommendation and pros and cons of each alternative is considered. Um, so you can read that more. And also Palo Alto Council procedures has this excellent uh, inf uh, requirement. Decision making should be based on the same information. Council member, um, for example, council member Moore requested something about impact fee. Therefore, she voted no because she saw the report was inaccurate. I had no knowledge of that report, so I voted yes. And then I might have voted no if I had the same information, but I didn't have the luxury of that. So Palo Alto require all the questions and responses to the staff be made available to the entire council and the public so that we all know the best information to make the best decision. This is another that the city attorney mentioned briefly. Palo Alto has this established procedure of colleague memos. Two council members can write up uh, a brief like one page memo to propose a potential policy or study and then the council decides whether they want to go further schedule agenda item or, or refer that to a commission and the agenda title should be descriptive so that and include the actions that's requested so the public is aware um, so I'd, I would like the city manager to develop guidelines for council agenda packet, such as the ones that's included in Berkeley. Yeah, I'm done, thank you. Okay. Thank you, council member uh, Charles. So we have about 10 minutes. Um, so I would like to give uh, council member Froon and vice mayor uh, Mohan the uh, five minutes and five minutes. Am I, am I going first? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mayor Wei. My understanding is uh, that we never had a procedures manual uh, all this time. Uh, generally, all jurisdictions do. Uh, we have, uh, uh, it's my understanding that we have some informal practices that the city staff use uh, as guidelines, uh, and that may have worked in the past, but it will not work now. We, we are a sophisticated city of 60,000, and um, generally accepted principles call for a procedures manual in municipal government. Um, it provides a, a foundation for good governance. Uh, is this a, a perfect document? No, not by any long shot. But it is a document that establishes procedures so that expectations and uh, practices are clear for us, uh, for staff, and, and the public. So it is a, a road map to get us to where we want to go. Uh, so we're, we're not there as yet and we, uh, but to stymie it at this point, uh, at this point uh, is not productive and it doesn't do anything. So my uh, uh, suggestion, my recommendation is that we move forward taking into account uh, all the comments that we have received and that uh, city attorney has uh, uh, listed on in his presentation um, and and go for it uh, 
till the next meeting and approve a procedures manual. We need something. We don't have anything now. We will not have a perfect document a month from now or two months from now, but we will have something to work on uh, with the understanding that uh, uh, this is not uh, cast in stone and we will have other opportunities to make revisions if something doesn't work, uh, but we should keep that option open and move forward with this uh, procedures manual. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor Mohan uh, from Councilman Fruin. All right, so I, I generally agree with most of the um, uh, document as it is originally presented to us, but there are certain revisions I, I would like to see that would make it, I think, uh, function better. Um, I would revise section 5.7 to strike the word online so that uh, ethics trainings that occur, say, in the, the course of a normal um, conference that uh, the City Council might engage in would normally be counted. That's actually, interestingly, going to be the case for most of us tomorrow. So it would be helpful to not uh, duplicate that and spend additional money on it um, merely because one uh, one word exists there and there's a geographical um, circumscription of the rest of the section. Uh, section 8.2, I would delete in its entirety. I think that council members can figure out how they want to sit and there may be a variety of reasons why they want to sit in a particular place, including uh, as a result of a disability and I wouldn't want to get in the way of that uh, through some sort of rigid formal uh, requirement on seating. I would revise section 8.5.2 um, in the spirit of, you know, understanding that sometimes information is presented to council that we might want to examine at that, uh, on that exact day that has been uh, added to the consent calendar and that perhaps a council member has not asked for in advance to allow council members the privilege of removing at least, at most one item from the consent calendar without providing prior notice. Um, I think that that would harmonize the need there for staff to be prepared and for us to respond on the dais without overburdening the rest of the, the calendar for that day. Um, I would revise section 8.6 to remove the 10-minute time limit on total time for public comment by a single member of the public, and I would increase the length of time that members of the public have to raise their hand or submit a blue card to speak up to nine minutes from five. Um, I think it's important that people have the opportunity to figure out how to participate, and that's very frequently an issue for people who are participating for the very first time. Uh, they'll have an issue with Zoom, they're not quite sure where the link is, or they get cold feet and have to work up the courage. I think that they deserve the opportunity to have at least a little bit more time to, to get involved. Um, I would revise section 8.9.3. Um, along the lines of the recommendation uh, that is stated in the city attorney supplemental information um, to make it consistent with the same rule that we have that is proposed for um, council questions. And I would also, in addition to that, like that rule to displace any contrary rule in the city's rules of, of parliamentary procedure. Um, I would revise section 8.10 on meeting length to require only a majority of members present in voting to extend council meetings past 11.30 p.m. instead of a two-thirds majority vote of the council. And I would clarify section 8.12 to note that a special meeting can be called during a recess. Those are my comments. Thank you, Council Member Froon. I'm going to use a couple minutes to uh, make my comments. I do believe it is very important that we have a procedure to follow. As Council Mem uh, Vice Mayor Mohan says, we don't have one, it's good to have one, so that everyone is clear. The council, the staff, the public is clear. How are we going to move forward with a council meeting? This is a business meeting. We do need to make things happen. And I do believe it is. we need a procedure that's going to be offering a more welcoming public comment, or communication sections to welcome a diverse group of people to come and talk and not to be intimidated by certain group of people. So I do believe that we need something to follow. And I can see clearly tonight we're probably not ready to vote. So, um, and, and the second thing is a really well-run meeting does not have to be long. If council members and public are well prepared, I've read this package 
three times and I make comments to myself and I understand a lot of things and things I don't understand, I emailed City Manager Jensen, uh, City Manager uh, Wu and Council, uh, Attorney Jensen ask questions. So I do believe well-prepared city council meeting does not need to be long. Efficient, responsible council meeting is good. Last year, if I understand, we have 60 city council meetings, including all kinds of council meetings. That is a burden, not just on staff, but on council members and on city, um, our public too. So I do believe that we need to move this forward, but if I can um, propose to my fellow council members, um, probably not ready to vote tonight, but we can collectively email our uh, recommendations to city manager Wu and uh, uh, city attorney Jensen and a new proposal we can put on the next agenda as an action item and have plenty of time to work it through again. And that will be my proposal, but um, I will come in um, your council members um, input on that shortly, please, because we need to recess in about two minutes. So I'd like to make a motion to continue this item to the next meeting. And I would like if the staff is going to uh, write down comments from Council Member Moore and Fruin. I would like a copy of that because uh, it's a very, it was a very long list from both of them. <laughs> Council Member Fruin? Yeah, just as a point of order, we have a, a second study session item and we would ordinarily have to start the regular City Council meeting at, at 645. So if we are going to continue uh, this item, I would suggest that we continue that one as well, and I would be open to a special meeting if necessary in order to ensure that it's done in a timely fashion. Okay, Council Member um, Moore. Okay, so that didn't quite sound like a like a second. I'm not sure because it got it got amended. So I'm gonna, if I can, I'd I'd, li I'd like to alter it a little bit and, and have this at a, a regularly scheduled meeting um, because we did have a significant number of comments from the public regarding this being a, a study session um, special meeting and if we could do this at a, um, at a at a regularly scheduled meeting I think that might be beneficial maybe that distinction doesn't need to be made um, I, so I do have a number of other comments that I would like to to get into the record um, and and be part of the next meeting, uh, one of them being item 5.8, the mayor's initiative budget. We actually didn't, from the research I did, searching through our last proposed budget, uh, allocate any money to it. Um, so you, we we need to address that topic as well. So we don't have time to talk about it right now. So what would be the suggestions of city manager how we proceed? Sure, through to mayor. Um, we obviously don't have time to um, finish this item or item number two. Um, you have two options. One is to continue it to a regularly scheduled meeting, which is February 7th. We do have a number of items scheduled already for that meeting. Um, or if you wish, you can have a special meeting. Um, this is a month where five weeks happen. So there will be an extra week. Um, we're away in Sacramento, most of us, the rest of this week. However, there might be opportunities to hold a special meeting next Wednesday or next Thursday. Staff can definitely poll um, council members' um, availability and come back. Um, to that extent, I would um, appreciate, and I'm sure Chris too, um, a list of all the recommended edits from each of the council members. Um, and as opposed to making a staff recommendation, we'll package in a way that this is coming from a specific council member as opposed to from staff. Um, and then we could, I think our original recommend, recommendation will stay put and with each council member's uh, recommended edits. Um, it, it will get a little complicated because some of the comments are not going to be in sync. Um, so we'll figure out a way to come back with that staff report and the recommendation, which may take longer for council to deliberate and to get to the end. So with council approval, um, I would suggest that I will recommend a study session because it's going to be a longer, a regular meeting. It's going to impede our other decisions. So uh, we do have timely things we need to decide. Um, how is the process? Do we need a motion? Um, so so, so you, you, you would need a motion to continue these items either way. Um, as far as the timing, I would just urge uh, the council to build in an, enough time to get comments to staff um, so we could synthesize them in a staff report. and. Um, I, I know that, that some of you are, will not have a lot of availability in the next few days, so, so I would just encourage you to, 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 to keep that schedule in mind. 
Okay, so may I have a motion, please? Um, so I'll modify my motion to continue the first item to a study session, but with the session. action to be to be scheduled in a regularly scheduled meeting. And the second item, I would like that to be continue to be um, I guess it's still continued to the to a study session, but I would like the title to be more descriptive. I have suggested uh, the wording to the city attorney so that it's not just about roles and responsibilities. We are actually talking about consolidation. So that should be in the description. So that that's uh, my motion if I have the support. Do we have a clear um, language of the motion? Um, um, through the mayor, I qu question. So I, I believe when you're using the word consolidation, you want it described as elimination, perhaps, so that people understand that word mm -hmm. better. But I, I will second that, but I just want to make sure um, consolidation or elimination is, you know, I think it makes a difference to the public perception. Yeah, so uh, so mm -hmm. I, I, I would just remind everybody that we are um, still on deliberating on item number one. Oh. So we need to move, make the motion separately, you are suggesting. I, 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 so I, I think it's fine to continue them both together, but if we're going to, if we, if we do want to discuss item two at all, we should we should move on we should move on to item two before we we do that substantively. Mm. Okay, so the so we're we're moving to item two. Um, no, there no, has been no, no there's been no, there's been no, there's the, been no so vote I on struck item the one. second part of my motion related to item two. And, and th through, through the mayor, if I understood correctly, um, you're asking for the, the item to have a, st a study session to go over item one and then have the actual action occur at a regularly scheduled meeting. It could be on consent on the regularly scheduled meeting, but, but on, it's at a regular. regular. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'll second that. If so, um, so I had one question. Yes. Please. Uh, may I wait, uh, what are the timelines? We're not talking about the next uh, uh, council meeting, are we? Um, is there a special uh, meeting between now and the next? Through the mayor, um, there isn't one right now. So we will have to oh. poll each of the council members' availability to see if we have a date available and the facility is available. If not, it will very well be the February 7 regular meeting or the 5 o'clock um, special meeting ahead of the regularly scheduled meeting. Um, point of clarification, uh, Council Member Chow mentioned that study sessions usually don't come with the action. Um, I do want to clarify that Council has um, taken actions in the past during study session. So it's not that Council is prohibited from taking an action on a study session item. Point of clarification. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madam uh, Sitting Clerk, do you have a clear language of the motion? Yes, Can thank you, you Mayor. Would you like please? me to repeat it? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Okay, so. Uh, Chow moved and more seconded to continue study session item number one to another study session with uh, the action to be scheduled at a regularly scheduled council meeting and to continue item two study session to another study session. Is that accurate? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we have motion and a second um, yes. discussions. I just want to clarify that that still leaves open the opportunity of doing this such a special meeting. Okay, so if the clarification is done, let's uh, vote by light, please. The motion carries unanimously. Okay, great, so let's have a two minute recess and come back with our regular meeting. It's not too late, it's two minutes late. Thank you.